The intent of this video is to review saturation tactics bombers adopted to reduce the threat from German flak. This is the channel's fifth video that addresses topics related to German flak. The videos are located in the channel's flak playlist. This page from an August 1945 headquarters AAF intelligence report titled Flak Neutralization outlines steps bombers can take to reduce the threat from ground artillery flak. Item G lists saturation of the integrated air defense system. Saturation of the gun systems is defined on this page from a May 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report. Have the maximum number of bombers pass over the minimum number of firing flak batteries in the shortest time. One saturation technique is to reduce the distance between the bomber formations or trail. This page from a 1945 Army Air Forces Evaluation Board document titled 8th Air Force Tactical Development illustrates a 6-mile trail distance of the 54-bomber combat wing that was active during most of 1943. Saturation of the flak batteries is one of the most important, if not the most important, countermeasure tactics bombers can take to reduce losses and damage. The effect of reducing the formation trail distance is shown on this Case 1 graphic example. Eleven bombers are flying in a tight squadron, arranged in these positions. The attacking force is made up of ten squadrons total, with each squadron following in trail by 15 miles. The flak battery guns are located here, and the larger circle represents the gun's effective range. The ten squadrons are flying in the direction of this arrow. The first squadron comes under flak attack at point A, and the flak guns continue the attack until the formation is out of range at point B. Formation 1 will be under continuously pointed fire for two and a half minutes. Since each 88mm caliber flak gun's practical rate of fire equates to around 14 rounds per minute, as shown on this table from a 1945 ADI report titled German Flak, each gun within the flak battery will fire around 35 rounds. The second squadron is following 15 miles or 3.6 minutes behind the first in trail. It will take around one minute to reposition the flat guns, recalculate the director's ballistic solution, and account for the projectile's time of flight to detonation. The components of the integrated flak battery are shown in this image from a 1945 headquarters United States 9th Air Force document titled Flaked Facts. The main components are the small Würzburg gun laying radar, Model 40 director with integrated optical sight, and flak guns. The directors crunch the numbers, estimating the formation's future position based on its present travel parameters. The directors may also use data provided from the gun laying radar. The directors provide the flak gun's elevation, azimuth, and projectile's fuse duration. The guns will have time to fully engage the second squadron as it rides through the danger zone. This process is repeated for the remaining eight squadrons. In case two, the trail distance for the 10 formations is reduced from 15 miles to one mile. A very different outcome can be expected. The first group comes under flak fire like in case one and the guns maintain targeting on group one, ignoring the trailing squadrons. Once group one egresses beyond the gun's effective range, the flak guns stop firing and reposition themselves to attack group 10 until it is beyond the gun's effective range. Only squadrons 1 and 10 will be fired upon. The formation with trail distances of 15 miles were under attack for around 25 minutes, while the same formations with reduced trail of 1 mile were under attack for around 5 minutes, or 20% as much. This page outlines some disadvantages of flying with a shorter formation trail from a December 1944 Air Defense Division document titled Air Defense Review. Bombers flying in a 4-mile formation trail will experience half the flak threat as formations flying with an 11-mile trail distance. This is one reason why the 8th Air Force's formation trail distances dropped from 6 miles in 1943 to 4 miles in 1944. The formation size also decreased from the unwieldy 54 aircraft combat wing to the manageable size 36 aircraft group. Ground flat guns will not be able to engage follow-on formations due to the new target transition time required. The disadvantages of tight trail include prop wash hazard, increased susceptibility to mid-air collisions, and air-to-air -air bombing. These issues can be mitigated with training. The Germans' response to saturation tactics are described on this page. Bomber saturation attacks were of great concern. If a saturation attack was expected to occur, the flak defense commander would orchestrate the gun's firing order. If the formation's trail was at or under one minute in duration, the guns on one side of the bomber's line of approach would engage the even formation, whereas the flak guns on the opposite side would engage the odd formations. 
This map shows a flak battery protecting a German target. If the target is a Sloina factory and the route of the bombers is along this line, the flak batteries on this side would attack the odd trail formations, and the flak batteries on this side would attack the even formations. Saturation of the target had the effect of splitting the ground defenses by reducing the gun's combat effectiveness in half. Under visual conditions, the lead bomber was selected as a flak aiming point. Bomber crew morale would be affected if the lead bomber was lost. The formations may be in disarray. An alternate plane would need to take over as the group lead. The formation's lead plane is easiest to see and target. This page summarizes the results of a real-world case study regarding the effect of saturation tactics on bomber losses from a July 1945 20th Air Force's Air Intelligence Report. B-24s from the 7th Bomber Command flew 2,203 sorties against Iwo Jima. The formation's trail duration varied during the attacks under near-identical combat conditions. For formations with trail durations more than two minutes, the damage rate from flak was 20.3%, whereas the damage rate for formations with trail durations less than two minutes, it was 11.6%. Other observations of the study. For formations with trail over two minutes, the damage rates of the first and second formations were the same. This implies the guns concentrated their fire equally on both formations. For formations which were spaced at durations less than two minutes, the damage levels of the second formation was 40% of the first formation. This implies gunners could not redirect their guns on the second formation with equivalent fire as the first formation. A reduction in trail reduces flak exposure. The duration from the first to last bomber over the target should be as short as possible, as discussed in this 1945 Flak Intelligence Memorandum No. 9. This is a single most effective passive tactic bombers can adopt in reducing flak losses and damage by saturation of their defenses. Decreasing formation trail from 2.6 minutes to 0.2 minutes reduces the flak hazard by 88%. This page from a post-war 1945 AAF Evaluation Board document titled Flak Defenses of Strategic Targets in Southern Germany lists the three factors as to why German flak failed in stopping the bomber offensive. High altitude bombing of targets, saturation of flak defenses by large formations, and radar countermeasures. In summary, the U.S. modified bombing hardware and tactics throughout the war to counter the flak threat. One tactic that dramatically reduced the effect of flak was to tighten up the distances between the formations. Operational data showed that reducing the trail distance to less than two minutes reduced bomber damage and losses from flak by half. Reducing the trail distance even further down to one mile reduces the flak hazard by 88%. Saturation of the target area by trail reduction is listed as one of the top three flak reduction tactics. If you've enjoyed this flak threat reduction by target saturation deep dive and found it worthy of your time, please consider commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.